and this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Go check out my website at skyazrael.com for life coaching and mentoring. I want to talk a little bit about anxiety. I've talked about this topic many times in the past. I've talked about in the past how to calm yourself down in the moment of an anxiety attack. And that's kind of a popular topic because we all get anxiety. Some people suffer from it worse than others. And an anxiety attack can be rather debilitating, triggering, and it's helpful to know some simple tricks. So I'm not gonna go into that because I have a whole other video on that. You can like and subscribe, uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel, scroll through. I got probably 740 videos now or something. I got a lot of videos. What I want to talk about is your lifestyle management. One of the things that's helped me with my, over, with my anxiety, I've had just overall anxiety, not just about one thing, but I'm anxious about everything, at least I used to be. I'd wake up with anxiety and go to bed with anxiety. I'd be anxious about five or ten different things all the time. And maybe it was part of my personality to look for things to be anxious about. I no longer look for those things. I've figured out a way to manage my lifestyle. Lifestyle management is something that I coach, that I'm an expert in, and it's saved my life, and that's why I like to promote it and to turn people on to how to set yourself up with a program. There's three things I wanna talk about today that will specifically target your anxiety and help you to live a a stronger life, a more confident life, a, a calmer life. Anxiety is fear, fear of the future. When you're thinking about your negative emotional attachments to the past, that's depression, that's not anxiety. We're not anxious over the past. You're depressed about the past. You're anxious for the future. You're afraid of the unknown. It's natural. The three areas that I want to talk about within lifestyle management that are going to help you target your anxiety and to reduce it, drastically reduce it from your life, is faith, food, and fitness. Those three F's, faith, food, and fitness. So let's start with faith. I think it's important to have some sort of connection to a higher power. I say higher power specifically because it's good to be able to be within the a hierarchy of a spiritual order. Now I don't care what religion or spirituality or faith that you follow. It could be Buddhism, Taoism, Vedanta, Hindu, it could be uh, Christianity, Jewish, Muslim, anything. It doesn't matter. But I think it's important psychologically for us to have a connection to a spiritual energy that can guide us, that can heal us, that can comfort us. There's a lot of stuff that you're going to go through in this life alone. And there's a lot of things that you're not going to know well, what's going to happen, even your own death. And when you've expended all your uh, tips and tricks, when you've done everything you could, you've used all the tools in your chest, you, you, you've sucked all your friends dry of all the energy, trying to you know, get them to comfort you, Where, what do you do then? You just drop on the floor and cry. That's what some people do. You become paralyzed with fear. That's what some people do also. You turn to vice and just inebriate yourself. That's what some people do. That's what I used to do. No, we get through with faith. Having faith is proven that it reduces anxiety to have faith in every day, to be grateful, to have a relationship with your God, with your spiritual power, with just that energy of the universe, whatever it is for you. That will help you get through. It will give more meaning to your life. 
I honestly don't understand how people who are atheists they get through dark times even my own mother she had cancer a couple years ago this was her third bout with cancer she had to have chemo and radiation and it was during the COVID stuff so I couldn't even go up there to be of help and even people that are close to her and the family up there couldn't even go to the hospital with her because of the whole COVID thing so she had to go through this alone and I tried to introduce the idea of maybe it would be a, a, just an option to think about a spiritual power to be able to have someone to have a relationship with, a spiritual energy to be able to relate to and to connect with in these times when we're super afraid and totally alone and oh, she batted that out, you know, shut up, that's stupid. Whatever, then go through it alone and be afraid. But some of us have a faith, a connection with faith and that helps us and it helps us not be so afraid. Some people get it, some people don't. The next one is food, this is a big one. Food is huge. When you're talking about anxiety, food is huge. Food is a big deal. It's odd to me how some people are so willing to go to a psychiatrist and get diagnosed so they can get on antidepressants, hoping to just pop this pill, refusing to do any kind of real work on themselves because that's really how we become stronger is by you know, doing work on ourselves, facing our demons. But they will go and get these antidepressants, which is a pain in the ass. I'm sure they're expensive. You have to remember to take them. And then, of course, then there's side effects. But these same people go to the grocery store at least once or twice a week like everybody else does you continue to eat like total shit starving your body of nutrition eating junk food with chemicals chemicals that are going to fucking send your your brain through an emotional roller coaster ride that's what chemicals do what do you think those drugs that you're taking are is chemicals i'm an old drug addict i know that chemicals can change your mindset that's why i used to love cocaine it used to make me happy my life, the whole world could be crumbling down. I'd do a little bump, do a couple lines. And I'd just be in a good old mood. Food is a drug. Food is a drug. Start shopping in the right aisles. You won't have to be waiting in waiting rooms of psychiatrists so much. Wait in line at the grocery store. Go to a good grocery store. It's expensive. It's worth it. Learn how to eat. You have no excuse to not know how to eat. Learn how to eat. The internet is there for you. You can go to a nutritionist. You only need one visit with a nutritionist. They have health coaches. I can turn you on to some of this stuff because I have a pretty good knowledge of it. And teach you what good carbs are and bad carbs are and these types of things. If you have any particular medical issues, a nutritionist that your doctor sends you to is really the ultimate way to go because they can tailor a whole eating plan for you that includes your fitness and all this stuff and you will find that some of your depression goes away, your anxiety starts to lighten up, you start to become happier in general. A lot of times this negativity that we hold on to and the, just the, 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 the swirl of stew of negativity that we think about all day long, that could be because you're starving your body of nutrition. I'm not talking about calories. You could be fat as fuck and still starving yourself, starving yourself of nutrients. So food is immensely important. It takes a lot of work. Everybody cheats. And this is a lifestyle. And you can always do better, just like in the gym. And we're going to talk about fitness next. Fitness is important on so many levels. I could talk about fitness for two hours of all the different things, give you a 25 point list of why fitness is important. But when we're talking about anxiety, fitness is important. It helps to clean out your mind. It's almost like a therapy within itself. It has a chemical, uh, electrochemical reaction inside your brain that endorphin rush and just the adrenaline and the whole process of it but you learn lessons when you work out I learn about failure all the time I've been working out all summer long and most of the, the fall to failure so I don't I'm not just doing six reps or eight reps I'm going rep to failure until I can't do it anymore and then uh, have to drop the weight 
I'm working out six days a week. I'm failing six days a week and it's making me stronger. It's got a whole new idea of what failure is. Failure is a projection in the future of what's going to happen. I have a lot of anxiety about failure. That's one of my fucking issues. And working out has taught me to not be so afraid of failure. In fact, I'm not afraid of it at all because I know on the other side of failure, on the other side of that obstacle, on the other side of that heavy weight is my strength. Fitness is important. I could talk about fitness for an hour and a half. It's, I left it for last because it really, I think, is the most important aspect to all of this. Get yourself on a workout plan and you will find that the stuff that you're having anxiety about starts to go away. It's all food for thought. Life is about choice. Thanks for watching.